the Lenovo Legion 5i. I think this is the only model of Lenovo Legion I've never done a formal review of. Lenovo gaming laptops basically go with the LOQ or LUC, then they go with the 5 Slim or 5i Slim, then typically you move up to this SKU here, the 5i, after that you move into the 5 Pro, then you get into the 7s, 7i Pro, 7i Slim, then you can get into the 9. So this is a very kind of mid-range, pretty much like slightly towards the lower end, lower end, more budget friendly, uh, but it still is very premium. Um, gonna be a, probably, I'm assuming, a few features that are tweaked from the uh, 5 Pro, but I suspect that it's gonna be basically right between the 5 Slim and the 5 Pro, as you would expect from this laptop. So uh, this one here has pretty respectable specs here. I ended up getting a 4060 in it. It has an i7, look at that, weird like, an i7 in this model here and uh, pretty respectable specs and it didn't cost me a lot of money. Uh, I mean, it, I got it like the day it hit the Lenovo website and it cost me about 1700, 1750 Canadian dollars. Uh, that was literally like, that's introduction price. So I mean, you could probably get it cheaper if you wait for a sale, uh, but it looks pretty good overall. You can see here, it's got a metal lid, nice metal lid, no plastic there. A little bit of plastic on the bum. I did play with this at CES a little bit, um, so I, this is not the first time I've ever touched one, but plastic bottom on this though. So like the 5 Slim, it's going to have a plastic bottom. The 5 Pro is where you get into, 5 Pro also has a plastic bottom. It's usually the 7, so the 7i and the 7i Pro that have the uh, metal bottom. So you know all these are going to have plastic bottoms. This is that firmer plastic though. I suspect it's actually going to be pretty rugged. And it doesn't have that weird, I don't know what I'd call it, like Gundam kind of vent where it has like a triangle going around and it goes all the way around the back of the laptop. This one's a nice clean cut like the uh, Slim, which I actually like quite a bit. So you can actually see the separation between the bottom and the top. It doesn't have that vent on the side basically. It just comes out the back. Looks pretty nice though. Uh, let's get into the weight of the laptop. Check it out. It's certainly not a light laptop, um, but it's not behemoth heavy or anything like that. So 2,463 grams. That's a little over 5.2, 5.3 pounds, somewhere around there. I'll put it up on the screen. Uh, the charger here, let's open this up. Uh, again, this is my unit. I bought this so I can do whatever I want with it. What do we got for a charger? 230 watts. I actually have bunch of 30, 230 watt chargers sitting around. So I'm just gonna put that back in there for now. Um, weight on this, adding that on top, we're up to 3,353 grams. This thing came in the box. Oh, it's a little accent. So let's open that up as well. Yep, so that comes off there. And I suppose that you can swap that. Go with the blue instead of the black. Let's do it. It's my laptop. So it looks like we probably just uh, take out some screws from the back here. Oh, it actually comes off. I want to do that on camera. I just basically put my uh, little plastic thing in there and just pulled it up and came right off. So that's the naked version of the back of the Legion 5i. Let's denakedify it with this here with a little bit of blue. Okay, there we go. Pointless in terms of performance, but cool in terms of cool. Okay, so that's that there. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the way this looks actually. Looks like that's got that uh, single style there, which is similar to the 7, Lenovo Legion 7i has that, kind of what they used to call the slim. Uh, port selection, uh, you can see it's changed on the back. Previously, a lot of the ports were on the back of the Legion laptop. Now we have some move to the side. So on the left side here, we have a USB-A, 10 gigabit per second USB-C. So that'll give us reasonably good speeds, actually, about a thousand megabytes a second if we're doing transfers. Uh, USB with power delivery. So in theory, we should be able to charge a laptop out of that. And I think, should give power out for a you know screen or something. Microphone, microphone combo, microphone headphone combo jack on the end there. And then we can see here, USB A, USB. It's got a lot of USB A's, three of them. Then uh, we get our Ethernet there, camera kill switch there, reset for uh, I think for the CMOS. And then we actually have a micro SD card there. Very cool. Again, this laptop does kind of point towards craters in that too. Uh, it's also a gaming laptop, but that's cool. And you can see the back here. Normally, a lot of this I.O. would be on the back, but this year, there's a little vent here. In theory, they're saying that it helps, I don't know, evacuate, pull air in, push it out there. I don't know. Basically, something with the air. I think it more has to do with how they're maneuvering the uh, sodium memory. 
uh, just giving it more room basically for soda memory, but that's the power in HDMI out. So the most annoying ones that you would want to be on the back, uh, HDMI out to your screen, power out to your wall are on the back. Those are the important ones. I don't mind really having too much USB-C and A on the sides there if it's going to uh, you know, provide some type of benefit. Look at the inside here and then we'll open up the laptop. And I've had people ask me about the USB-C charging and you can see there it does work. Just to double check because I've had some people say that some laptops don't necessarily accept USB-C. Uh, this one does. This is a 130 watt Lenovo charger. It'll supply about 100 watts over this here and it seems to be working just fine. And look at the internals. Yeah. So there you go. Typical Lenovo Legion. Uh, this one here is actually a very light gray. If you look at the uh, Pro, the Pro is a very dark color. It's a very light color. You get that kind of new Lenovo Legion designed power. I don't, that, that, there's almost no chance that's a fingerprint. I'll bring it up on the screen if it is, but uh, pretty much only the 7i Slim has a fingerprint reader and the 9, of course. A little bit of stickers, smooth there. This is a plastic upper keyboard deck, but I do expect it to be relatively firm. Black matte key, uh, keyboard there. Camera up top there. No kill switch there because the BIOS is on the side there. No facial unlock, so looks good though. Let's uh, actually put this little papier back in there and we'll open up the laptop. Okay, so to get in the bottom, I just took a, a boatload of screws, nothing complicated, just Phillips head, nothing abnormal. I expect it to be very easy to get into this laptop because it doesn't have that kind of uh, grill on the side there. So what I'm anticipating I would do here is go like that, give it a little bit of torque, like that, a little twist, and then basically just pop it off. Right. Super easy to be honest. The bottom is plastic, but it is a very thick and sturdy plastic. The bottom is plastic, but it is a very thick and sturdy plastic. Um, quite heavy actually. Uh, this is common on some of certain Lenovo uh, laptops. The Lenovo ThinkBook 16, the 16 inch ones, which are actually very uh, firm. Like they actually have, they act, they're actually very, um, the 16 inch laptops, the 16 inch ThinkBooks that Lenovo makes actually have a nice kind of, um, the same type of plastic on the bottom there. And it gives them actually a really like sturdy chassis. It's, most of them are all metal all around, but the bottoms are often plastic. Not all of them, but some of them are. And when they do use plastic, they use this kind of harder plastic. Um, you can see there's a lot of structure in here, like a lot of structure to keep this Legion from bending. There's actually like a plate in there, basically plastically riveted in there to give it some more structure. And you get heat um, thermal pads on both sides because there's gonna be dual SSD in this one. So those are gonna basically give you, um, your, your temperature is gonna go into that huge block there. And, Take the heat out, so that looks good. Nice bottom. And here is a look inside the laptop. And as with Lenovo Legion in general, we're getting some really nice internals here. This model here has an 80 watt hour battery, which is pretty good. I mean, this is an Intel CPU, so it's not gonna have crazy good battery life. Um, but overall, it should be pretty solid, I would say, especially with the 80 watt. Uh, you get little Peasley speakers here. I don't expect anything interesting out of the speakers here. Probably similar to the 5 Slim and the 5 Pro. It's like they're serviceable, they do the job, but they're not shocking or anything like that, so it is what it is. Uh, we do get upgradable Wi-Fi here. We get our first NVMe here, and that is, I think, a uh, Kyoxia. Yeah, Kyoxia NVMe, which and I've seen the Lenovo do that with quite a few laptops, actually. There's a Kyoxia right there behind the camera. Uh, and then there's another slot here, 2280. So you actually get pretty good upgradability. One, two NVMe's. You get upgradable Wi-Fi as well. Uh, you do get upgradable RAM. As you can see underneath this, there will be a RAM dual let's see if it comes with one or two probably one. Oh, it comes with dual very cool so this one comes with eight gigabytes and eight gigabytes some laptops recently have been coming with 16 and an empty slot because it's ddr5 it doesn't really matter uh, it runs a dual channel anyways i think it is technically slightly faster when it has two like you get more better latency but there you go um, so eight gigabytes eight gigabytes sk hynix good ram upgradable easily so that's why i got this for 16 gigabytes and then the actual cooling system here looks Actually, it looks pretty good, to be honest. You get a triple heat pipe here, actually four heat pipes here. That one's going kind of the VRMs down here. Another heat pipe coming down here, probably to some VRMs down there, and three over here with really massive fans, actually. Those are very thick fans. Those are like a centimeter thick there. Uh, really dense fans with that kind of curved style to re reduce turbulence. So I expect this to not be actually super noisy, and I actually expect it to run relatively cool, actually, to be honest. Uh, that looks really quite a robust cooling system. Lenovo Legions typically do not screw around when it comes to cooling. Uh, I consider them pretty much top in class when it comes to cooling, and I think most people agree with me. And you can see that here that this is, you know, this is not a high-end, you know, five Pro seven or anything like that. Seven Pro. Uh, this is just a five, five i. 
Um, it's actually one above their kind of base slim model and you're actually getting really good cooling here. So, okay, here comes the fun part of the video, uh, the actual keyboard. Um, so you can see there, it's the typical Lenovo Legion keyboard, numpad on the side there, slightly shrunk uh, horizontally. So you're not gonna get full size, but it's you know, basically a full function numpad. Uh, slight shift over for the uh, trackpad off to the left here. Uh, some people hate that, but it's, I mean, I use these things all the time and it really doesn't make a big difference. I mean, these trackpads are so big these days that even the center of the laptop, there's still a ton of trackpad over here anyways. And typically what I do is I don't type with my hands here. I type with my hands here, centered here. So my hands are over the trackpad anyways. Who would have thought? Uh, then you do have these black keycaps here. I don't, they look nice. There's a nice contrast between the gray and the black keycap. So visually they look quite nice. However, uh, I don't like the fact that they're black because they give bad fingerprints. Um, eventually if you use this, you'll get fingerprints on that. The nice thing is this won't, so you're not gonna have fingerprints all over the laptop itself, but you will get fingerprints on the keys there. Um, so it does look nice to have the black, but I prefer uh, just basically leaving them kind of the same color as that in previous years, 2022. Yep, so it's a 10 out of 10, as per usual. It's a Lenovo Legion keyboard, so pretty much just takes every other keyboard on the market and just throws it in the trash. Um, you know, there's other keyboards that are good. I test a lot of laptops and I find lots of keyboards to be good. Um, Lenovo themselves have, I would say, probably better than this would be actually the ThinkBook 16P, which I finally got one of my hands again to refresh and kind of play with it. it has a slightly better keyboard. It's basically the best keyboard on the market. Um, this would be like second to that. Like it's a 10 out of 10. I mean, there might be slightly better keyboards on the market, but that doesn't make them, like make this not a 10 out of 10. So fantastic typing experience. If you bang out essays, if you're a student, if you do professional work and you write a lot, there's really n not many better typing experiences that you're gonna find on any laptops on the market than a Lenovo Legion. They're just fantastic. Um, I am a huge keyboard typist. I type a lot and it's important to me. And that's why Legions are something that I love to type on. They're fantastic. The track pads on these are off nice and smooth. It's not a glass track pad, but it's nice and smooth. Kind of slightly even smoother than that. Very nice. And the clicks on these are often really good. Nice and sharp. Uh, RGB here. So you can come in here, go function like that there. It's the first one. Uh, it's kind of dim, so I'm gonna kill the lights here for a second. All right, I'm not sure, some kind of wavy thing. We have a third profile there which is just kind of on. We have a fourth profile there. It's not the brightest RGB, I'd say. Uh, maybe you can turn it down. No, it only goes up to two. Um, so it's not the brightest RGB. Usually when you get into like the Lenovo Legion 5i Pro, it's gonna be a little bit brighter. And then the Lenovo Legion 7 has significantly better uh, RGB and you get more profiles as well. You don't get four, I think you get, uh, I think it was six or seven. I can't remember off the top of my head, um, but you can come in here and it looks like it, is it our per key? Uh, no, it's not gonna necessarily be all, our per key, so. Um, Divide area off, click keyboard image. Okay, can we do one at a time? So it looks like it's zonal, it's not per key. So we have zones here. We have one, two, three, four zones of RGB. You can set them up however you want. Uh, it's not gonna be as advanced as the higher end Lenovo legions. That's how they separate them out. Some of these like little features here. So rather than, you know, just making the laptop not good, you know, just making it an inferior, massively inferior laptop. Usually what separates some of these legions is, you know, some of the little extras, some of the little bonuses. Uh, that way you're still getting an incredibly performant laptop, uh, but you know, the differences often come down to things like that, those little tweaks. Uh, you do have X-Rite here. If you do reinstall Windows fresh, you will want to load up X-Rite. X-Rite is important because what it does is it actually, it actually will be for your screen calibration. And so if you find that you reinstall Windows, your screen is calibrated from Lenovo. Lenovo does pre-calibrate their screens. So then you come in here, you're gonna to wanna to re-download X-Rite, it will pop up there. You can come in here, you can check for updates, but you can actually restore your profile from the internet. It'll go on the Lenovo servers, it'll pull down the uh, calibration settings for your screen and it, you'll have a properly, uh, screen with proper calibration. That's one of the advantages of some of these Lenovo products is that they typically, whatever the, you know, the color space is, if it's 100% sRGB or 100% DCI-P, whatever, they're still gonna be very well calibrated. And you can come in here and actually tweak them. You, know, you can go like that. You can go with uh, sRGB. You can go default, you know, not calibrated. Uh, this is not really, I wouldn't call this like a super high creator screen. Usually you get into like the 7 uh, series, especially the 7i Pro this year and the 7i uh, Slim. 
with the 3.2K screen have you know really high color space, 100% DCI-P screens in that. But this is still really nice. Uh, you do get pretty good brightness on it. It's not super bright. This is 350 nits. I usually find that that's enough if you're gaming indoors. Uh, if you're gaming outdoors or if you're doing a lot of work outdoors in like really bright environments, 350 nits is a little dim, but indoors it's more than enough. My office is actually very bright. I have a light here, uh, like a, over top of the screen, but it's shining on the keyboard. I have two lights to the right, one to the left, and my overhead light. So this is a very bright office right now, even if the camera doesn't show it, and it's more than bright enough. So 350 nits is fine for that. 500 nits is nice. It does give you that little bit of advantage if you are going to be working in an outdoor environment or you know sun potentially shining on the screen. I think you're fine though. 1600p screen, nice and uh, nice and crisp on that. You do get 165 hertz refresh rate, very good. 60 hertz is good if you're on battery, helps save some battery life, but 165 is good. So it's 100, actually a really nice screen, realistically. Okay, and here's a look at the screen. Uh, you can see there it's definitely not 100% DCI-P, you know, it's not an OLED or anything like that. Uh, it's a matte screen, so it's not gonna be, the colors aren't gonna pop quite as much, and it's not gonna be 100% DCI-P. You can see right off the bat that the reds aren't incredibly vibrant like a DCI-P color space, uh, but it does still have, you know, the sRGB color space, so it is still quite good overall. It's not gonna be a bad looking screen by any means. It looks pretty good. Better than a lot of those budget gaming laptops that you can find out there with kind of really bad screens. You can see here the blacks are nice and uniform here too. Um, it's not an OLED, you know, not absolute blacks. It's an IPS, but I find that these legions typically have pretty good blacks. Uh, they have good black uniformity. They also have good gray uniformity. They also don't have a lot of bleed. Pretty much none of really ever get bleed on them, uh, which is quite nice. And they also have really good contrast ratio for an IPS screen. You can see here all the colors. Blue is really vibrant, and the greens and the reds. But overall, this is a really nice screen, which is really nice because let's say this is just a pure gaming laptop. You're not going to be doing any creative work on it. Like, I don't want to play games with really muted colors, especially modern games. Some of them can have really beautiful color palettes. It's very enjoyable when you play a game like Horizon Forbidden West on a screen that has good color space versus a muted, you know, dim, maybe like a 1080p with 72%. Uh, sRGB, 75% sRGB or something. It just doesn't look good. Overall, this is a pretty good looking screen. Uh, there's definitely better screens out there, uh, but this is quite good, especially for a gaming laptop and a fairly budget gaming laptop. There are much, there are cheaper laptops out there, but there's also a lot more expensive ones. This is a really nice screen. So if you're doing content consumption, you know, watching shows, you're going to have a great time on the screen. It's really nice. And for gaming, it's going to be fantastic because high refresh rate, bright enough to be honest like most desktop monitors are 350 nits so not really any difference from that and also you're going to get good color space it's going to be enjoyable okay and now we'll do the audio test which i'm assuming is going to be the weakest part of this laptop i expect this laptop to have good performance you know the screen looks good everything kind of looks good i expect that the audio is going to be not that great so typically i find with the legions you have to get into the 7 you know the 7i or the 7i pro or above like the 9 where you start to get good audio i typically find that the uh, fives in general just don't really have good speakers. They're passable, but they're not that great. Yeah, so they're fine. I mean, they don't get super loud. They get loud enough, like 80 dB or so. It's loud enough, I guess I'd say. It's not like you can't hear them. It's very loud. Um, but there are louder ones out there. The bass, low-end bass is kind of not there. Uh, they're nice and clear. You know, there's no rattle. There's no tinniness, no like tin can kind of sound. Um, you know, the high end, the low end, it's all there. Uh, it's just that it's all nice and clear, but the low-end bass is like basically non-existent. Lots of worse speakers out there. There's a lot of gaming laptops with worse speakers, significantly worse speakers, uh, but there are a lot of laptops with better speakers as well. Let's go into Cinebench here. We're just going to check out how noisy the laptop is. We'll get performance in the benchmark section, but let's see how noisy it is. So fairly noisy on uh, performance mode. Looks like we did throttle for a moment there, but the uh, I guess the fans kicked up there, which helped. It's actually not running too bad. Oh, there it goes. It kicked up a little bit there. Uh, so there's some throttling. It'll probably throttle, get cooler, throttle, get cooler. Uh, the scores, you can take a peek. It's probably going to... Yeah, 20,000. Okay, so it's going to have pretty good scores, despite the fact that it is periodically throttling. I mean, it's going to get really good cinematic scores here. Let's kick out here. 
check balance mode if it's any quieter. To be honest, it's considerably quieter to me. Okay, and we'll just go down to silent here, check how quiet that is. It's actually very quiet on silent. The fans are almost off. Okay, and here's a look at some benchmarks. We can see here the three Cinebench scores. On the left here we have silent, middle here we have balanced, on the right here we have the performance mode. Uh, you can see that in performance mode it's doing very well, 21,000. That is a very good Cinebench score, especially for just being an i7. You can see here in the middle we're getting 19,500, so basically throwing on a balance. You do lose a little bit of performance, but I mean we're talking about maybe 10% or so, if even that, so definitely worth it if you want to keep the noise down. And interestingly, even on silent mode, we're still getting a very good Cinebench score, 15,000, basically 16,000 on that silent mode there. So you're going to be able to do very demanding tasks, even on silent mode on this laptop. You're going to be able to get by with even just silent mode for a lot of just day-to-day -day tasks here, even relatively demanding. Uh, Time Spy here, you can see is obviously very good. This graphic score is good, 11,000, basically what you'd expect out of a 4060 or so. Uh, CPU score here is very good, obviously. For SSD here is a great SSD, that Kyoxia, 6,700 reads, 5,500 writes. So it's going to be a very fast NVMe, especially for demanding tasks. You can see here that the Wi-Fi is 600 up, 600 down. That's about as fast as my Wi-Fi goes. So very good Wi-Fi there. Then battery life, it's okay. It's not absolutely staggering here. You can see at 93%, Windows is estimating 2.3 hours. Uh, that's obviously going to be a bit of a low estimate. Uh, but if you actually look at the consumption over here, uh, we're probably looking at about four hours or so. So more like four hours on idle. 100% brightness, uh, screen turned all the way up, 1600p and everything. But that'd be about four to five hours of idle. So certainly not that good. It's an Intel i7, uh, 14th gen, so it's kind of be expected. Uh, then you can see here some YouTube, and now we're dropping down to probably uh, two and a half or so hours, maybe three. You could push it to maybe three. Uh, that's what you're going to get out of that. So realistically, battery life is uh, pretty poor on this laptop. It's not what it's for. It's you know a pretty high-end, high-powered gaming machine. You know if you're looking for battery life, you're definitely going to want to start looking towards the AMD machines. Okay, hey, here's a look at the built-in webcam. I'm doing actually a fairly challenging scene right now. I have no light coming from the left at all other than reflection. And two lights on the right, a little bit on the front. I'm actually doing a really good job. I find that a lot of times gaming laptops struggle, uh, but I find that these Legions in the 2024 actually, they have really nice webcams on them. Uh, this is actually quite good here. So the polling rate looks good despite the low light, and it actually looks like it has really nice resolution as well. So very good webcam actually. And you can go in here and you can switch between your performance modes. So there's performance, balanced, and quiet. You can also switch through them by hitting function Q. Function Q. Do, do, do. So silent mode is going to reduce the wattage to the CPU GPU uh, quite a bit. The 4060 actually should be fine with that, to be honest. Balance will be obviously balanced. Uh, and then performance will just let everything tear uh, if you want to have that. You can go into custom mode here. You can set your fan speeds custom as well. But you can also do performance tuning in here and have a custom profile. You'll see it goes purple. When it's in that mode, uh, you can set the actual maximum for maximum watts for the CPU here. Well, that's where it goes really high. Holy smokes! Um, which is something you may want to do. Uh, you can have long term, however long you want to be you know, long term, short term bursts versus long term max temperatures. You can bring that down if you just want to be a little bit lower. Uh, cross loading, basically, and you can do things like switch between CPU and GPU power because the GPU and CPU will share power for the system here. So if the CPU needs tons of power based on the game you're doing, maybe you're doing like flight sim or something like that. It'll put more power into the CPU. Maybe you're doing something like, I don't know, Horizon Forbidden West, which I find to be more GPU intensive. It'll dump more watts into the GPU if need be. Uh, that's a nice one there. Um, you can also do uh, the, this is the uh, dynamic boost there. You can actually just set the total watts on your GPU. So 115 for the 4060, it's kind of like the max for this system here. You can set it to 115. There's honestly, there's really no point in doing that. The 4060 doesn't really gain much over 100 watts. You're just kind of adding more heat. So typically 90 is like almost 100% performance realistically. The difference between 90 and 115 watts is probably like, I don't know, 4% performance, maybe 5%. You know, if you're going from 60 FPS, maybe you're up to like 64, 63, it's not going to be huge. Um, I actually typically gain at an 80 or 90 in most cases, and sometimes I even go down to 60, uh, depending on the game. It's actually quite nice. And then you can also do CPU to GPU dynamic boosting. So you can tweak this, you know, if you find that the default modes aren't up to exactly as you want them to be, you can tweak them in here. I typically just use these. Quiet mode is actually often good for games that aren't super heavy, um, but you know, a lot of time you can just throw in balance mode. Performance is rarely needed. I guess some games you might need it. You'll see when we get to the performance part of this uh, review. 
GPU overclocking you can turn on. Uh, you can turn up to 200 megahertz on the uh, GPU there for the clocks. You can tweak it there. You can set up the VRAM up to 400. Turn that off, I don't need to do that right now. Uh, that's something you can do. Uh, you also can do D G iGPU hybrid working. So hybrid will switch between dedicated and integrated graphics. This will be only integrated. Uh, you can also go down to dedicated. If you're only gaming on the laptop, it'll give you maximum performance because all the watts go to the GPU. However, on this laptop, you don't want to do that. You just want to leave it on hybrid mode, just like that. Then what you do is you come in here and you go to NVIDIA control panel. You come into display mode and you'll see here that this laptop is equipped with advanced Optimus. Advanced Optimus will automatically disable the dedicated graphics and go back to integrated, which is what it's on right now. If you're not doing anything GPU intensive, which will increase your battery life because the NVIDIA graphics aren't draining watts. Uh, or if you're, you know, you load up a game or something, video editing that's going to be using the GPU, it will then all, then it will uh, disable, then it will enable the dedicated graphics, giving you much more performance. If you don't trust it, because sometimes it does mess up and it doesn't necessarily disable the GPU when it should have, you can go with Optimus, which is just manually disabling the GPU, the dedicated graphics, or you can go with NVIDIA and just manually enable them. Or you can let Windows pick it. Your call. Uh, NVIDIA is usually pretty good, but it's not always great. I also find that Windows has the gaming mode, which it always gets wrong. Um, so I come in here and I type in gaming mode. It'll go into graphics settings or game mode. Either or. This will pop up here. And what you can do is you can manually add applications here. So I find that internet browsers, not all of them, but especially Chromium based, Chrome based browsers, if I use Brave or Chrome, it will constantly use my NVIDIA graphics, keeping them active and just obliterating my battery. So what you can do is here, you can come in here, go browse, and then you can go into your computer. I don't know, I'll just pick any program, doesn't really matter, that one. So you go like that there, you go add, and then you tell it, okay, do I want it to be on NVIDIA? Do I want it to be on integrated graphics or let Windows decide? Windows often is wrong. Windows is not, <laughs> I mean, it, it's what we have, but it is often wrong. So if I find that the NVIDIA GPU is constantly waking up and draining my battery, I actually go to power saving and I set programs to run with power saving. Specifically, I find browsers are often really bad for that. So set those to power saving. So right now we are in performance mode and we are at 1600p ultra native. And uh, it, we're getting about 60 FPS, which in this game is actually very good for 1600p. You can see here that the GPU is pulling about 100 watts, 110 up to technically, very good. And the uh, CPU is at about 60 watts or so, so doing well. Pretty noisy though. 55, so about as noisy as the laptop gets. Temperatures here though look pretty good. CPU is at 76, GPU is at 75, so good overall. It's able to keep the CPU and the GPU cool, basically, put it that way. Uh, the Fairly quite robust cooling for what it is is actually doing quite good here. We'll drop down to balanced mode here. We'll see a decrease in the GPU down to about 80. So we lost about uh, about 30 watts off of that. CPU is also down about 10, and we did lose some performance, but really it was only what was that four or five FPS or so, and it's considerably quieter. The 4060 does scale very well, so does the 4070. It scales very well with lower watts. You can drop it down. Now what I'm gonna do is drop it one more. I'm gonna drop down to silent mode. It's still very playable, you can see here, right? CPU is still getting 30. The Legion is uh, 25 to 30. The Legion is allocating a slightly more watts to the CPU. The GPU at 45 to 50 watts is gonna still perform very well. A 4050, 4060, and 4070 are incredibly efficient CPUs at lower watts. Like you can see, we went from 110, we are less than half, much less than half the number of watts, and our performance is down, but it's only down 15, 16 or so. Right, actually legitimately near silent. Okay, we'll try some Horizon Forbidden West. It's obviously noisy right now. Let's see, we're at 1600p, no scaling, graphics on high. Let's try very high, see if we can get there. So very high, basically maxed, 1600p now. Uh, it's doing actually pretty good. Again, this is just a 4060. CPU is getting a little bit warmer, but still doing pretty well. GPU is not running too hot. 
So DLSS quality, let's see what that does for us. That'll probably get a 60. We're very close to it. Yeah, just shy of 60 here. So maxed game, lightest DLSS, you're pretty close to 60, to be honest. You could probably just play like this. Around 60 is kind of the sweet spot for a game like this. This is a demanding area here. You can see here that the screen looks pretty good too. I mean, it's not going to rival like an OLED or a mini LED, 100% DCI-P, but overall it's still a very enjoyable screen with this 100% DCI-P in this game here. Frame generation, let's see what that gets us here. It's not a super fast game, so frame gen should be okay. Now we're way up to 82. mixed speed game it's not super fast but uh you know i find it a little little jerky i don't know if you can see that a little it's just going so um i don't know some people like frame gen it does give you more frames but look we'll come here right we'll go like that now we have lower fps but look how smooth that is oh yeah that's way better so Marvelous. Yep, so it's doing a very good job. And the last thing I just want to show here is uh, temps. I'll just point them out here. So, you know, we're, the CPU is pulling 60 watts. Holy smokes. Uh, GPU is pulling 65. So this is really, really tanking the system. Holy smokes. Uh, CPU is getting pretty hot. But again, we're pulling 50 to 60 watts into that CPU. Right, so you can throw it into balance mode. Bring those temperatures down if you care. Okay, so what do I think about this laptop after a long day of testing, tearing it down, playing games? I mean, it's a Legion. It's going to be obviously very nice. I haven't tested this specific model before, the Legion 5i or 5. I've done every other SKU, to be honest. Uh, 5 Pro, 5 Slims, 5 Sevens, and blah, 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 blah. I've never done the just normal 5 uh, before. And it's fantastic. I actually like it in some ways more than the 5 Pro, um, and I like it. It's basically a more enhanced version of the 5 Slim, I would say. Uh, the 5 Slim is actually kind of similar, I guess, in some ways, uh, but this has more robust cooling than the 5 Slim, based on what I can see. Um, you know, it has a similar type compromise. You know, you get the plastic bottom here, like you get in the 5 Slim. Um, I mean, it is what it is. You get that on the Pro as well, to be honest. Uh, metal lid is nice, right? Uh, I.O. being moved is no big deal there. You get nice cooling inside as a result. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I like the light kind of silver that I get on the 5i five, uh, five here, similar to the Slim. I kind of like that more personally than the darker color on the Pro, 5 Pro and 7 Pro. It's just me. I just prefer it. Uh, you know, the keyboard I wish was a little bit lighter, but otherwise it's pretty good. I mean, really the screen is fine. So, I mean, in terms of like in terms of consuming media, it's a nice screen, 350 nits, good colors. I guess 100% DCI-P would be better, but again, they have to separate their laptop somewhere, right? And probably the biggest critique of this laptop, I would say, is the audio. Audio is not really that great. Um, but otherwise, it's pretty much rock solid. I mean, it's really good performance, uh, very good cooling, actually, on what it is. I mean, you can get this with an i7. It's going to absolutely just sing in terms of performance. 46 is going to absolutely sing as well. Battery life is not fantastic. I mean, it's a 14th gen Intel processor i7. I didn't expect it to have good battery life and it doesn't have good battery life. So, I mean, the negatives are gonna be uh, not great battery life and the speakers are not great. Otherwise, it's 